And yeah. we'll, this is Acts chapter 25. Uh, we're not going to do all of Acts chapter 25, but we can do a big chunk today. Uh, you might notice that it's going to be kind of similar. We're in the, the last few chapters of the book of Acts, and there's a lot of things that repeat themselves. Paul goes to a place, people go crazy, go nuts, and then um, they, they, they grab him, and then he tries to speak. And people go crazy, go nuts, and so then they try to grab him, and then he tries to speak, and that's just kind of the, the, the section that we're in. Have you noticed that there's a lot of that repeating? And Paul gets a chance to, mm -hmm. to preach a lot. We're going to have another moment like that this time. All right, so Acts chapter 25. Okay, so we ended with talking about how... Oh, come on, Mr. Camera, focus, up. focus, focus, focus. All right, we ended talking about how... Uh, Felix and his wife listened to Paul uh, preaching, and they thought it was really interesting until Paul started talking about what three things? And the judgment to come. Righteousness, self-control. Mine says temperance. That's an old translation, but it's self-control. I'll write that here. Self-control. So he heard a sermon about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. And did he like it? No. 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 Oh, terrified. No. And I will listen to you later. And he kept listening to Paul. And that's really cool. He kept listening to Paul. Um, it doesn't say anything about him listening to change though you see the difference there so that's that's kind of a sad part of the story well then he uh his job term ends and he goes home and he leaves paul in prison and a new guy Portia Festus, uh shows up now i was putting crowns on these guys uh just because they were governors uh actually mr festus Portia festus is going to meet a guy who is a king and so we'll have to have like a bigger crowny king uh, on that Maybe guy. we can do one cross. Well, we can worry about drawings later. Right now, we're going to read. Festus, therefore, having come into the province, after three days, went up to Jerusalem from Caesarea. And the chief priests, right, the priests, and the principal men of the Jews informed him against Paul. Already, so we got. I'll draw a chief priest. Here he is, and he is grouchy about Paul, and he's got his chief priest, like the thing with the with the stones on it, and he's pointing at Paul. Of course, where is Paul? Is Paul in Jerusalem? No. Paul's no. back in Caesarea, so he's pointing a really long way off to uh, where Paul is uh, under house arrest. So I'll draw a house with um, like gates so it's like house arrest we were doing different drawings for house arrest there we go so he is talking against paul because because they want uh portia festus to to do something about paul and they besought him or they asked portia festus asking favor against him that he would send for him send for paul to jerusalem what do they want pa uh, paul to do they want paul to come to them in what town are they at? Jerusalem. Yeah, Jerusalem. they want Paul to make this journey to Jerusalem, laying wait to kill him on the way. Doesn't that sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. Remember mm -hmm. the guys who said, we will not eat, we will uh, not drink until we kill Paul. We're gonna do it. Now, I don't know if it's the same guys, um, if it is, they've been not eating and drinking for over two years. <laughs> that would make sense. That's impossible. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's working out for them. But it's the same idea. It might be the same guys that said, well, well, we'll just kind of wait about the no food thing. We'll do that again later. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. But it's the same kind of plan. And so they want to bring Paul down to us here in Jerusalem. How be it, but, but Festus answered that Paul was kept in charge at Caesarea. 
and that he himself was about to depart there shortly. Let them therefore, says he, which are of power among you, uh, go down with me. And if there is anything amiss in the man, let them accuse him. So what does Portius Festus say? He says, no. Oh, wait, how does he look? How does he look? I think he's got a little, a little beardy beard thing. Okay. He's got his beardy beard thing there. Does Portius Festus want to, to bring Paul out here to Jerusalem? No. No. So no. this is the hand of stop. Daddy, um... uh, let them come with me back to Caesarea and we will talk about it there. Yes, Jack? I can't say you can give Festus a laurel wreath. You know, because that's what they would give people them wreath. Well, yeah, but we're already drawn. We got to keep going. So, so um, he says, bring, um, we're not going to bring Paul here, so we can put an X through that, right? We're not going to bring Paul here. You come back with me. And when he had tarried among them not more than eight or ten days, he went down to Caesarea. And on the morrow, he sat on the judgment seat and commanded Paul to be brought. So a little over a week later, he goes back home to Caesarea. So Paul is going to get this trial again. Has he had a trial where he's in front of some Romans and some Jews come up and accuse him? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That happened already in Jerusalem. Uh, it already happened in Caesarea with Felix. Now it's going to happen again with Portius Festus. It's just kind of that repetitive thing happening over and over again. Paul still was... not. Um, he's still not. He still. They still don't really find anything bad. Right. This is almost. This is over two years later. Yeah, like they're still trying to do it, but Paul. Paul. Well, this is kind of the thing. Has Paul been? <laughs> we were talking about that word blameless, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean Paul has never done anything wrong. What it means is. Paul is behaving blamelessly. He's behaving righteously. How can you accuse Paul of anything? He's been good. And so that's, that's kind of the model that we need to copy because we can see how it helps Paul, his blamelessness. All right. And when he was come, when Paul was come, the Jews which had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing against him many and grievous charges. Okay, okay. So here's Paul. We'll draw him with a nice smile of righteousness because he's a good guy. Going to give him a big smile. Like, he knows I'm a good guy. And he's just kind of <laughs> sitting there with his hands. You know, it's like, yep, yeah, I'm just going to sit here, stand here calmly. So that's Paul happy. And how are the Jews speaking about him? Very angrily. Yeah. They're pointing and they probably got fists of anger. And um, I don't know if they're doing ten temper tantrums like a baby, but I'll draw them like their feet up like a tantrum, temper tantrum, like a pair. And um, I'll just do some more pointing fingers. You know, that idea, he's the bad guy and they're all pointing at him and they're all pointing at him. But Paul, Paul's just trying yeah, to- mm -hmm. All right, so they bring against him many grievous charges, which they could not prove. What does that mean? They said it, but they couldn't prove it. Yeah. They're saying, Paul is a terrible guy. Why? Um, Because I say so. That doesn't prove it. Uh, I know that he's bad because he's bad. Ooh. Can you prove it? He's bad. It's just kind of dumb. This is not working out well, right? While Paul said in his defense, all right, here's Paul speaking, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I sinned at all. I'm not breaking Jewish law. I'm not doing anything bad against the temple. And I'm not doing anything against Caesar or Rome. So they're saying he's bad. I can't prove it, but I know he's bad. And Paul says, no, 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 I haven't done anything wrong. So what does that mean? He's in jail. Why is he in jail? Because he's bad. Uh, no. Uh, 
Do you see the problem here? It doesn't really make sense, does it? Yeah. Poor Paul. Let's see what happens. But Festus, desiring to gain favor with the Jews, answered Paul and said, uh, will you go up to Jerusalem and there be judged with these things before me? But Paul said, I am standing before Caesar's judgment seat, right? A Roman judge. Is Paul a Roman man? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I'm standing before Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as you very well know. Then, if I'm a wrongdoer and have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die, but if none of those things are true, whereof they accuse me, no man can give me up to them. Paul says that if he needs to die because he's been a bad murderer guy, what does Paul say? I'll do it. Right. Kill. Yep. And like a Lukey thing. Yes. I won't not die. Yeah. Now here's the thing about that. Um, I'll say I am willing to die. If I'm guilty, I am willing to die. Has Paul said something about I am willing to die before? Yeah. Yep. When? Sounds like something he'd say. When he ties himself up with the belts. Yeah, when that prophet tied him, yeah. the prophet tied himself up talking about Paul. Paul said, I know, but I'm willing to do this work. Is Paul still willing? Yes. Yes. Even after being in jail for two years? Mm -hmm. One year of virus quarantine is pretty hard. I think what Paul went through for two years is even worse. But does he still work to have a good attitude? Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Paul's a great guy. Wow. Uh, I appeal then to Caesar. You can't give me up to these Jews. I appeal to Caesar. And so where does Paul going to go? He says, yeah. I appeal to Caesar. So I'm going to go to Rome. You guys shouldn't be accusing me of these things here. This isn't fair. This isn't right. You can't take me to Jerusalem that way. I appeal to Caesar. What's that going to be like? Think about this. We don't have a perfect answer for this question, but think about it. Do you think the Caesar cares about Jewish law or Jesus? Definitely not. So why does Paul want to appeal to the Caesar then? Because God said that he was going to go to Rome. That might be part of the answer. Paul knows he's going to go to Rome anyway. That's where the Caesar is. Is it a good thing to speak to the Caesar? Yeah. Yeah. Could it also be a dangerous thing to speak to the Caesar? Yeah. Yeah. That's part of what Paul does. Paul is willing to do that stuff. He's a very brave guy. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, said... You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. All right, so he's going to go to Caesar. He's not going to go to Jerusalem. Now, when certain days were passed, Agrippa, the king, and Bernice, I think that's his wife, arrived at Caesarea and saluted Festus. And as they tarried there in many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, so Festus is going to tell this king about Paul. There is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, asking for sentence against him. All right, so Festus, I'll go ahead and I'll draw Festus, and he's talking about Paul, right? What do you think mm -hmm, Festus yep. thinks about Paul? Hmm. Do you think Festus likes Paul, doesn't like Paul, or I what? 
he think he doesn't really like him and he doesn't care for him, but he he maybe be impressed with him. Could be impressed with him. Be brave. Yeah. Do you think Festus understands what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. No. I mm -hmm. Festus is a little bit confused, I think. Right? I think Festus is a little bit confused about what's going on. Hmm. Let's see what happens. So that's why I drew a hand of a little bit of confusion here. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Portia Festus. All right. They asked me to sentence against Paul, to whom I answered that it is not the custom of the Romans to give up any man before the accused have uh, accused face to face. He needs to go on trial, right? You need to be a face to face trial, he's saying. These had an opportunity to make his defense concerning the matter uh, laid against him. When, therefore, they were come together here, I made no delay, but on the next day sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought. He's basically telling the story we just read, how Paul came out and defended himself. Concerning whom? Concerning Paul. When the accuser stood up, they brought no charge of such evil things as I supposed. Did they have a good argument against Paul? No. Nope. No. This is what's really funny. I, I, I'm going to actually highlight this in blue because I think this is funny. But had certain questions about him of their own religion and of one Jesus who was dead, but whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Think about it this way. Now, we know who Jesus is. And we understand why some people say Jesus is dead and why Paul says Jesus is alive. We understand that, okay? But I don't think Portia's Festus- People didn't understand what they were saying. Maybe they said he's like dead, but not like not physical dead, well, spiritual that's, dead. Yeah, there, he, he maybe he's Portia's Festus. He's like, is it a physical death? right? Or maybe they thought the guy was dead, but Paul knew different. It's like, oh, I have a friend named Jim, and Jim- Maybe it was dead. just a story. Yeah, to him it's just a story. It's a true story, or it's a fake story. Porsche's Festus, uh, I don't know what's going on. Isn't that kind of funny? Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. here's what's cool. Did Paul, when we were talking a few minutes ago, did Paul talk about Jesus? Mm -hmm. When he no. was talking to Portius Festus, he says, I'm willing to die. He says, I've done no wrong. You know what's interesting? In the book of Acts chapter 25, Luke doesn't say, and Paul preached about Jesus' resurrection from the dead. It doesn't say that. But what does Portius Festus say the argument is actually about? So that means Paul somehow snuck the gospel into there again. Think about it. Wow. He's on trial and he still manages to talk about, this is all about Jesus who came back from the dead and they don't believe he came back from the dead, but I believe he came back from the dead. He's still talking about the gospel every time. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Paul is cool. So now we got to draw the picture again. Yeah, what was that question? exactly right that's exactly right i think that that's a great point because he really is is he stressed out about being in jail no it doesn't sound like it does it he's not focused on the things around him he's focused on the gospel that's perfect good connection kind of like he's saying that he's not guilty mm -hmm. to Jesus, even though he doesn't know even if he doesn't even know what he he still says it because mm -hmm. he knows it means good. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a good point. Good points, guys. You're making great connections. All right. Verse 20. 
So Portius Festus is still talking, and Portius Festus accidentally talks about the gospel. Think about that. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And I, Portius Festus, I, being perplexed how to inquire concerning these things, asked whether he, he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of the matters. But when Paul had appealed to be kept for the decision of the emperor, or the Caesar, I commanded him to be kept until I could send him to Caesar. And Agrippa, who's Agrippa again? The guy who's trying to no, it's a different one. Oh. That's a different guy. This is the king. This is King Agrippa, oh, yeah. whose wife is named Bernice. We just mentioned her. I haven't drawn her yet. We'll do that yet. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I also could wish to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, you shall hear him. So on the morrow, when Agrippa was coming, Bernice, da, 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 and then we'll read that part tomorrow. <clears throat> or not tomorrow. We'll get Greek in the next class. So Festus tells King Agrippa, King Agrippa, I got a weird story about this guy named Paul. And he tells him the whole story. And what does Agrippa say? I want he wants to hear about it. Agrippa wants, he wants to, wants to hear about it. Agrippa wants to hear about it. That's cool. All right, so we haven't drawn back here, so we'll close by drawing a little bit here. I'm going to draw Paul in the middle because this is all about Paul, right? So Paul... And he's got his preaching hand. So Paul, right? Paul, is he scared of dying? No. Nope. Mm -mm. Well, let's be honest. Maybe he's a little bit scared of dying, but is he willing to go through it? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. There's a difference, isn't there? Right? <laughs> Wanting to die and be saying, I will. Right. If I need to. Even Jesus, when he was in the garden, had to deal with that, right? Did Jesus really get excited about dying on the cross? No. 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 But he was but willing he... to do it. So not my will, but yours be done. Yeah, not my will, but your will. So here's Paul, and he's preaching. And we think he's just defending himself. I did no wrong. I'll say no wrong, right? That's what we read about, okay? And Portius Festus is listen, listening, P, F, Portius Festus. I'll give him a big ear because he's really listening, right? There's his big ear. It's kind of a gross ear, but you get the idea. <laughs> There he is, and he's wearing his royal sandals. There's his royal sandals. So Portius Festus is really hearing, right? He's really listening to this guy. And then at the end of the story, Paul says that he wants uh, to Rome, right? That's what Paul says, I appeal to Caesar. Okay, so he's going to go to Rome. But at the end of the story, um, King Agrippa shows up, and i got to give him a bigger crown than Portius Festus. So King Agrippa, I'll give him a long nose, kind of like we did with Nebuchadnezzar. There he is, and he's going to have a big beard like that. And then he's got just this spiky, like super, super spiky crown. Um, with balls. That's a terrible crown. Oh, my goodness. Let me start this over. Good grief. Okay. Um, I'll do the crown first. Crown is like big, and it's got gems and crystals. And the bally things on the very top. There's his nose, and there's a smile, and he's got a beard. I don't know how happy a, he, a, a guy see. he is. I, can't see. I know, Alice, you can't see, but you will see. So there is King Agrippa. All right. And what does we read? I did no wrong. But what did Portius Festus hear and share with King Agrippa? What was that? It was about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So, what went into his ear, even if he didn't understand it well, and that he communicated with this king was Bible. Yeah, I'm just going to put Jesus or gospel. Do you think that 
Portius Festus understood the gospel? No, no. No. And should we understand the gospel? Yes. Yeah. But, but here's something interesting. It doesn't sound like Paul had much of a chance to do a lot of gospel teaching. But did Portius Festus hear it? Yeah. 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 Um, so that's great. Even though King uh, Portius Festus didn't understand the whole gospel, he heard it. That's that seed. That's that little bit that was preached and gotten into his ear. So much into his ear that it was coming out of his mouth when he was talking about it to King Agrippa. And King Agrippa, we're going to find out, is a little bit more interested. And that's going to be really cool. That's going to be really cool. So, Paul, he's been in prison for two years. Under quarantine, you know how that kind of feels, right? But he's got it even worse than we do. And people want to kill him, and they're going to take him to, no, I want my rights, take me to Rome. I have done no wrong. Oh, and by the way, Jesus, Jesus is raised from the dead. Let me tell you about the gospel. How did he get that in there? Isn't that encouraging? We can do that too. I don't think we have to go to prison first. I think we're allowed to talk about Jesus before we go to prison too. Okay. Do you guys have any questions about Acts chapter 25? Yes. Uh, in that picture, there is Portius Festus saying that Paul has done no wrong, or is Paul saying he's done no wrong? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, kind of both, actually. Um, Paul says, I've done no wrong. And Portius Festus ended up saying, they were accusing Paul of a bunch of stuff, but it didn't sound like it. Um, so P P Portius Festus doesn't really focus on that, but he says like, yeah, I don't think he did anything wrong. And he talked about some guy named Jesus. They think Jesus is dead. Paul thinks Jesus is alive. Good question. Paul knows Jesus is alive. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Good point. Thanks. That's good clear. Because he got Paul thinks he's alive. But the truth is, you're right. Paul knows Jesus is alive. And you know it too, don't you? That's yeah. also kind of like saying everybody is alive. Yeah. All yeah. right, any other questions before we close? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Do you mean, no, like, kind of funny. Do you know, like, 100%, do you know how interested he was in Paul? Which one? Uh, Portius Festus? The, the, the Roman Emperor. Uh, this guy here? Oh, oh, the Roman Emperor? Um, we don't know. The Book of Acts just doesn't say anything. Um, oh. What we do know, I can't remember the name of the Roman Emperor who was at this time. I can't or, remember his name. No, but most no. of them were jerk faces. I, I mean, like this man. This one here? Yeah. Okay, King Agrippa. Oh, I should put his name out there. I'll just A-G Agrippa. Mr. Dan? Uh, just just one second. Uh, we're going to find out. Is that a, does that look like a GDU? All right. Ag. Ag. For yeah. um, he is going to be interested. We'll find that out in the, next, uh, in the rest of this chapter when Paul speaks to him. Paul knows who that king is. And I think that that king has heard about Jesus and these things. And so he is interested. Yeah. I don't know if he's interested to be converted, but he is interested to listen. That's pretty cool. A king, oh. a king wants to hear. That's cool. Yeah, like like uh, kings and prophets. When Jesus said kings and prophets have wanted to hear, and they didn't hear. Mm -hmm. And now a king is getting to. That's a good point. Good. That's a cool connection. Um, yeah. and a good question. Uh, Charlotte, what's your question? So Dan, I have a question. Okay, well, let, let Charlotte go first, and then your turn, buddy. I was uh, just wondering, maybe it was in the text, but um, why Paul wanted to go to Caesar. It doesn't really say, although we do know he had a dream earlier on, just mm -hmm. as you preached for me, testified for me in Jerusalem, you will testify before uh, about me in, in Rome. And so sometimes it seems like maybe that's why he knew he was supposed to go to Rome. We don't get a lot of his uh, history. 
One reason is if you send me to Jerusalem, they're going to kill me. So maybe that's one of his thoughts. One reason I think hmm. it might have been to kind of show that this is a really silly thing for me to show this is a little argument. Yeah, that's yes. true. Yeah. Yeah. That's good question, me. though. That's a good question. Um, Edmund, did you have a question? Well, well, when Paul said that I'm willing to die, mm -hmm. then, then he, and that means, well, um, part of it is, I'm this leaf. I'm eat this leaf. Um, Wait, uh, what I was going to say, okay? All right. Well, if you remember again, your mom can text it to me, and we'll do it then. All right. Um, anything else, guys? Are you okay? Me? Eva. Okay. What's up, Eva? Um, if, God, if Jesus was dead, because Jesus and God are pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. If Jesus was dead, then, like, how would the plants still grow and stuff? Like that kind of thing. That's a good point. Yeah. If Jesus, who created the earth, is gone, how are we still here? Right? That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. We believe in a God. We believe in a God who is alive. There's a song about that. The God. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? You guys had a lot of good questions today. All right. Yeah. I had a question. See you later. I'm gonna see. Oh wait, what, Layla? Did you have one? No, no. I just no. said. I just said there was an explosion of questions. Yes. So, if Paul is willing to die, then he knows that he gets to go to heaven. Yeah, yeah, because he trusts in God. You know, that's the real point. He trusts in God, and that's what we need to learn how to do too. That's a good point to end on. Hey, thanks a bunch, guys. Um, Lord willing, next week we'll pick up and we'll figure out what does he say to King Agrippa. I'll see you later. Thanks, Take Mr. care. Thank you, Mr. Dan. Thank you, Mr. Dan.